Michelle. Yeehaw. It's Liv and... I'm Mike. Woohoo! Woohoo, good to see you. How you been doing? <laughs> good, how are you? I'm fine. It's been a, been, a, been a couple weeks. Yeah, it's been a few. What's going on with you? Um, not much. I just, I've been chilling and watching a lot of TV and working and... Okay. Yeah. Well, so. What are you watching? Um, I've been watching a lot about the Idaho murders. Oh, ah, okay. Like, I've become too obsessed with it. Why is that? It's, it's good because of the guest we have today. We'll get it to that in a minute. It is very good because of the guest we have today. But, I mean, I could go on about it for, like, ever. Mm -hmm. But basically... What do you like in a murder? <laughs> this murder hits me different because this guy... Like, I think there's a lot of hidden things. Like, with the roommates and then, like, Brian. It's just too random. Like, if he would have stalked them to actually go to the house and then kill four people. Mm -hmm. Like, once he got to the house, I think any... Even a regular sociopath would have been turned off, but I think there was other people to it. Mm. And I've heard you some... You got a conspiracy theory. Yeah, and I, I've heard some rumors that other people were in the house, or the times are off, and it's just weird to me. She waited eight hours, so I've just become way too obsessed with it. Mm. So, um, yeah, so then I started, like, thinking about other criminals, and then, like, I was... Real ones, or, like, ones you make up in your mind? Like, real ones. Okay. So, I was thinking, and I, like, started my own conspiracy theory. All right, what you got? Let's hear it. Okay. So we'll you have to we'll give vet me, it right here. You have to give me your honest opinion. Oh, okay. So, I was watching Good Morning America. Right. And they had Martha Stewart on. Right. And Martha Stewart's been to prison. She has. She did time for insider trading. Okay, right. But, like, think about it. Dissect it. Martha right. Stewart. Right. An older white lady. Right. Okay. Right. There's no way that she couldn't have paid anyone off to not go to prison. And even if she mm. did a crime, there's no way she went to prison. So I think she made a deal. Right. That if, like, she went to prison and, and was an example for all this white-collar crime. Right. Then she would get, like, money or something out of it. So I have this theory that they locked her up for, like, a year. Right. At, like, in, like, Nantucket or something. Yeah, I mean, we could probably figure out where they locked her up. Because I don't think that's then, a mystery. Because then I got really into it. Right. And then if you look at her profits pre-prison versus... Profits? Oh, profits. I was thinking of, like, people that predict the future. No, like, her profits pre-prison versus right. post-prison. Post-prison profits, got it. Her post-prison profits are just, like, a mountain. They just go through the roof. Well, then you don't need a conspiracy. She just made a conscious decision to go to jail to increase her brand. Yeah. Right. So that's my conspiracy theory. I got you, but she didn't murder anybody. And I was really waiting for a murder in there. Like she murdered. She went to jail so no, she could have an alibi she, while she somebody she like got like, murdered. Best friends with Snoop Dogg, but yeah. Well, who wouldn't? I mean, <laughs> he probably sneaks in pot to all the prisons. He's probably the biggest supplier. Yeah, yeah. I don't actually know that to be true, but that's my conspiracy. Uh huh. So you work at a late night conspiracies. I was, uh, I was. You and I shared um, a, a moment this week when we learned, or when you told me. That the uh, the flume ride, the log ride, oh, the yes. best ride in Disney World is closing for good. Yes, yeah, Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain. As yeah. of last week at Disney World uh, in Orlando, I, it's closed. And you posted a picture online, but it looked like you were sitting in several seats. Did you like Photoshop, or did you just only ride on log rides with blonde-haired people that look like you? It was the Fourth of July, so I think we all looked the same because we were all in like they had special Mickey shirts. Okay. That you could buy there. You know, another trap. Yeah, yeah. So we all bought these 4th of July shirts, and it right. was the 4th of July. So I think it, like, looked like we were all the same, but yeah. we were all different. Yeah. I'm but so it was, like, me, my sister, and my mom and my dad, and that's my favorite ride. It's a great ride. And you and I share that. It was my favorite as well. I guess it's Love gonna, that last hill. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. I think it's probably going to be, like, Frozen and Epcot, where it used to be, like, a Norway okay. gnome ride. So they use the same track. They'll just turn it yeah. into a different theme. Yeah, they're turning it into... A different ride, but it's gonna be years oh. to redo everything. But it was just a really sad moment. Yeah. Obviously, it got canceled because it's you know from Song of the South, which has bad tendencies. But when you're riding through it, like you're looking at rabbits and Brer Bear and mm -hmm. turtles. And yeah, it's a little redneck centric. Mm -hmm. It's a little yeah. stereotypic. They really yeah. do profile some people there. Uh huh. And I like to quote that ride when I'm like I'm an attorney and. When you're leaving the ride, it mm -hmm. says it's the truth, it's actual. Mm -hmm. And everything I, is satisfactory. Yeah, but I just love that quote. Like, it's the truth, Dip it's the actual. Is that what it is? It's the truth, it's actual. 
that make me does that does that do well for you in court or wherever you uh, in corporate board meetings or whatever you but it is you do it's just ingrained in my head like the truth it's actual like it's just right it's the truth i like it hashtag yeah so so you're responsible for uh, our guest today and that uh, you've known her for a while i'm excited yeah. to, to have her yeah stacy's awesome so let's get to it let's do it Fine first rodeo. Fine first rodeo. Fine first rodeo. All right, Liv, so I'm really excited about our guest today. Tell us about her. Okay, I'm so excited to have this guest. She was really, really hard to book. I had to book her months in advance. <laughs> uh, we have Miss Stacy Newman. She currently is a producer at Warner Brothers. She was previously a producer for CNN and CNBC. Um, she has also, she specializes in murder and crime, but also... Actually, murder and crime or investigating it? That would be far more interesting <laughs> if she specializes in murder and crime. Investigating uh, and producing it. Um, and then she also was a character in Grand Theft Auto, the voice of a hot woman back wow. in the day. She's, okay. So we have Stacy here. Yay! All right, Stacy, welcome. Yes. So welcome, Stacy, to my first rodeo. Thank you so much for having me. Um, that's kind of funny. My first rodeo Ooh. is also like my first rodeo of being on the show. So I'm half scared and half excited. As well, you should be. Have you done podcasts before? Been on them? I've done one. Or, yeah, I've done a couple of podcasts, but not like this. So I'm I'm actually nervous, which is weird for somebody who's been in TV for I won't say how many years. Well, you're probably used to working with more predictable uh, yes. interviewers than I, she's some chick and some dude in Jacksonville, me. right? Yeah, <laughs> a little chance. bit, but um, no, it's exciting though because I feel like you guys are gonna throw me a few curveballs that I'm not really prepared for, and it'll make me for once feel what the other people feel when I'm doing the job. Mm -hmm. So I'll now understand what they're going through. That's true, because you bring people in, and, and most of them have never probably been on air, a lot of them, and all of a sudden they're foisted into some limelight, and you're telling them, it'll all be okay, this is actually going to be good for you, uh, and there they are. The funny thing about that is, because I've just been around and interviewed and been in rooms with all kinds of people, you know, in all walks of life, and I'm in rooms with people sometimes that are you know, CEOs, millionaires, billionaires, and they literally will be sweating and so nervous to do anything with TV. And I'm like, how do you do what you do for a living, but you're nervous to just sit in front of a camera? So it, it happens. Side note, um, Stacy got to go on the Dancing with the Stars set because she was working for Nancy Grace at the time when Nancy was on Dancing with the Stars. Okay. So Stacy knows all the stars. Wow. But she won't give you dirt. Ever. Yeah. Like, she won't tell me anything. So now it's our turn to interrogate you. So, Stacy, can you tell us about your first rodeo as a female producer? Wow. My first rodeo as a female producer, I would say, was actually my internship because I got thrown into the deep end immediately. I, it, I applied to several different places and I ended up applying um to cnbc which is the business arm of nbc because i thought they did like political shows at night primetime political shows and i used to watch them and i was like oh my gosh i want to intern there thinking that if i got this internship i'd be working on these political primetime shows and then i get there i get the position i'm all excited and then I'm told that, oh, no, 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 we don't do politics here. That's all done out of the DC office. And I was like, what? So next thing you know, I'm working in business news and I didn't even know what the New York Stock Exchange was. And this was in New York? Yeah, okay. it was in the New York area and I had no clue what I was doing. But at the time that I interned, which was not the summer, which is a mistake a lot of interns make, and I always tell young kids and students, do not intern only in the summer. Try to intern in a different semester because there's less competition. And I interned not during the summer, and they were so short-staffed 
they threw me into field producing as an intern with no experience. It was the scariest thing, but it also was the best training ground because I had to hit the ground running. I was doing interviews. I was writing. I was editing pieces. I was doing liaison work. I was doing all this stuff that a highly paid field producer would be salary to do i was doing it all as an intern and that was really like what opened the door for me to go into tv production you you must have i mean uh you you must have been able to fake it or or been really competent or or found ways to learn those things because you probably didn't know most of them coming in right yeah i mean that's a great question because I have a personality where I always ask way too many questions. Even now, people are like, oh my gosh, she's asking more questions. I constantly asked questions. So asking all those questions, I was learning how to do things. And I was fortunate enough to have one or two people kind of take me under my wing and show me how to, the ropes, show me how to do everything. But um, what is really true is i was always told most of what you do in your life and careers you'll learn hands-on on on the job and i was Mm -hmm. like no you learn this in a classroom and no it's really true you learn everything on the job while you're doing it right so when it was your first time like did you just walk into the control room and you're like hi it's me the intern three two one let's go (laughs) I mean, in some ways, yeah, because like I said, they didn't really have a lot of people on the team for various reasons. Like, you know, people, somebody was on a maternity leave, somebody was on like bereavement. So they were just like, oh my gosh, the place is going crazy. We just need bodies. So Mm -hmm. I was just being plucked into like plucked and pushed into places that I didn't even know what it was, but I just tried to blend in. I tried to copy what I saw people doing and copy what people were doing like in the scripts and in the computers and stuff like that. So yeah, I didn't really have time to be aware of what was really going on, which is a good thing. Cause in hindsight, if I knew all of that, I probably would have flopped and mm-hmm. failed. Did you make any uh, huge embarrassing mistakes that, uh, that you grew from? Cause that, that's sort of one of our premises is that you know, your first rodeo, uh, you know, you learn more from your mistakes than your successes. And in that situation you were in, you had to have made a lot of mistakes. Mike, I made a mistake like today. I make make mistakes constantly. And that is really also where you learn, you know, but I mean, I've made mistakes that I've been like in bathroom stalls crying on the phone, crying to friends, like, oh, I'm going to get fired. Like, I remember making a mistake on that first internship. And then that eventually turned into a production assistant job where some piece of material that was needed because there was some big breaking news story going on. I had accidentally taken it somewhere and the room got locked for the night. This was before things were like on digital servers and nobody could find the tape. And they were looking all over, they had to eventually get security to open up all these different doors to find this tape. And one of my friends was helping because she knew I had, was the last person that had it. <laughs> and that was out there that, oh, Stacy had this last. And I spent the entire night bawling my eyes out, crying, like I'm going in to get fired the next day and my career is over. And it ended up being fine, I'm still here, but, The point is you're going to make lots of mistakes and I'm still doing it. And and your mistakes, and then I'll shut up, Liv, I promise. But your mistakes are uh, mistakes in the the platform you run in. uh, They're just magnified, right? Because, I mean, you know, whatever. Somebody, I don't wear my tie straight. I don't wear my tie straight. But if you don't wear your tie straight and, I don't know, a couple million people see it and and social media picks it up, you know, and and turns it into a meme or somebody's mic doesn't work, that's uh, that's just a fishbowl, isn't it? Yeah, we've had a lot of those. And I mean, all the way up to the level of like, ooh, legal trouble type things <laughs> where something was said or you wrote something and it was like, oh my gosh, now the person came back and said, no, that's not true. Or, oh yeah. And it is just, your heart goes like this, <laughs> yeah. especially when it's live. 
because when it's live, it is what it is. Like that whole thing with delay buttons and all of that. No, that's for like bleeping bad words out like during the Oscars. <laughs> when it's live and you screw up, right? everybody sees it. Yeah. So it's funny because I know Stacy from my whole life and I just know Mike from like a mutual friend. But Stacy and Mike like had a what would you call it a connection before even maybe i was born oh gosh it wasn't that long ago <laughs> what are you 12 <laughs> no but i uh you used to work for uh nancy grace on cnn right and, and we've seen her a lot lately because she's like basically covering the idaho murders yeah that's her thing so she's she's been in idaho like at the house covering but anyway so oh, yeah. stacy was producing on nancy grace when they had mike Oh, I uh, guess you were a guest. I was a guest, and I'll, I'll give the quick version of the story, but it's probably a, a, you know, an anecdote that happened, you know, a thousand times a month for Stacy for me, which is my no, one. No, 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 no. <laughs> Before you say that story, please don't age up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so this was last week, and we were both 25. <laughs> so uh, I had a client who had a horrible circumstance. His, his daughter had been... Um, accosted and, and murdered um, and, and sex trafficked and you know that was horrible <laughs> you know full stop that's something that that Nancy Grace's show you know talks about and, and talks about for long periods of time so probably someone in a junior position to you wanted to have this uh, gentleman Brad Lockhart really good man uh, on the show and Brad said you know I'd like to bring my lawyer as a security blanket basically it's not like your show actually wanted me. They probably would have rather just talked to him. But so we get a, a trip to Atlanta, and, and they treat us well and get us in there. And I thought this was funny and kind of a microcosm for how TV works because uh, truth. And you tell me if this sounds right. We come into the studio, and there's a big red clock counting down, and it was it was below like a minute and a half. It wasn't a lot of time till it was going on. And as I recall it, Nancy was wearing like pajama pants and slippers under the desk. I don't know if that was. She looked great from the top up, but she was she was very casual on the, the bottom. And you sit across the desk from her, um, so closer than Liv and I are probably sitting now. And she introduces herself and is very warm to Brad. And she said something that communicated to me, like, who are you again? So, like, knowing who I was was not all that important. And so I, I said, uh, you know, I'm Mike Freed. I'm a, a lawyer in Jacksonville, Florida. And she, now we're down to, like, three, two, one. And she goes, I'm here with Brad Lockhart and Mike Freed, the best lawyer in all of Jacksonville. And so uh, in, in 30 seconds, I went from being a total nobody, which I'm not, to the best lawyer in Jacksonville, which I'm not. <laughs> and that's TV. It's all about you're the best or the worst, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, did you, after that appearance, right, in those couple TV appearances that you did not just with Nancy, but other shows, did that bring up your... Um, fame or did you you know like do people it, recognize you a little bit yeah probably i mean it's hard to say not certainly as you know you get calls from uncles aunts in other parts of the world or country that are like what that, what's mike doing on tv and then locally someone's like i was eating breakfast this morning and freed was on my tv so uh, i don't know that it made me seem like a better lawyer but it certainly was a conversation piece one time, Stacy put my wiener dogs on TV as pet of the week at CNN. Really? That's impressive. <laughs> what was the criteria for that? She probably didn't um, need it. The long no, just, process of vetting. Just if, you're, if your dogs were cute, pretty much. Yeah. That's a pet of the week. And by the way, I don't think you should sell yourself short, Mike. I mean, <laughs> you're just probably being like self-deprecating a little. I'm sure you are the best lawyer in Jacksonville, next to uh, Olivia, of course. Thank yeah. you. You and Nancy apparently think so, and that's all that really matters. Yeah. Whenever I have documents, I don't know what they are. I just send them to Mike. <laughs> Literally. I say, Liv, it's your library card. What, why are you having trouble with this? So, so you deal with a lot of murders. Uh-huh. Is that a question? Yeah. So I've talked to Stacy a ton about murders because I love murders. Like, Who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, really, when it comes down to it. Yeah. So tell us your favorite, like, two stories that you've worked on. 
Ooh, I can't, I can't, I can't, that's like asking a parent who's your favorite kid. Like I, I can't, <laughs> I can't narrow that down to one. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I'll say that it still continues to surprise me how popular this genre of TV is. Yeah. Because there, it, it is heavy. Some elements of it are really heavy, mm -hmm. right? And there's also elements of it where you are doing good. You're doing a public service because you're trying to maybe catch someone, find a missing person, bring justice for um, a crime victim or a murder victim. But since it's like along the scope of what I do, parts of what I do for a living right now, um, it's sort of like a job to me. You know, so then it's weird when like your friends, your family and other people want to be like, oh my gosh, you guys are working on this. what do you think about this? And what do you think about? It? And I'm just like, wow, people really love this, like the, the murder and the crime and the mayhem. And I don't know if that's a positive thing or a negative thing. I mean, it's great for us. Like, it, it keeps as I like text you every day about like the Idaho murders. <laughs> Yeah, but th there's just so many different cases that happen and you're like, sometimes you're moving from one right to the next, you're doing several at one time. But I know like for me, you know, two of the cases I think that really stand out in my life is like the Scott Peterson trial out of California and the Casey Anthony mm -hmm. trial out of Florida. Yeah. I think those two, especially Casey Anthony, we yeah. spent Go months and months and months on that trial even on the ground and yeah that one for me will go down in in the history books and now me. you guys like live in the same city yeah but I don't think we're gonna be going to dinner anytime soon or anything like that so <laughs> doesn't you I know you're more on the movie side of things now if I'm not mistaken but do um were you part of or have you seen her most recent sort of where she's telling her side of the story for the first time so I have not a lot of my colleagues have watched it because I just I just made a decision to move on from that case because I definitely had my own opinions about it which I don't know if I should share on this but yeah I just yeah I just wasn't I wasn't personally interested in hearing what she had to say but a lot of people that I work with did I didn't watch it either because I just didn't want to give her the time of day. Like, yeah. like in my head, I saw the trial. I saw right. the evidence. I don't need to see her lying to my face. Yeah. Well, how about you mentioned, um, you know, sort of your experience. Uh, um, I mean, I would have, I mean, you've obviously sat with murderers. You've gone over evidence just like an investigator and, and, and so forth. Do you? ever experience or, or do you need to be sensitive to secondary trauma that, that you can experience just by being around all this ick yeah you mean like if it's a little traumatizing yeah I mean do you find you're having nightmares just because you've looked over the, the evidence of these, these horrible cir circumstances or you've talked to the victim's family or, or yeah. the perpetrator no it, it there's components of it that can be very like harrowing and heavy just as like if a prosecutor who's prosecuting these cases or defense attorney is like defending someone in this case there are some really because even the things we see not all that we obviously can put on tv or show i'm working on one now where i just mean it was like a dismemberment case and actually we got the pictures of the actual remains and it was just like you know, so, mm -hmm. but I'm, I've always been good in television, not just crime, but, you know, I've done politics, I've done business news, I've done some sports, I've done hard news, that when I'm done, I shut it off, you know, I shut it off, and I have my life, I watch comedy, and eat and work out like I don't try not to bring it home with you for that reason, specifically for covering um, right. crime because it, it is it's it's heavy it's heavy yeah, definitely yeah well and like you watch happy things and read funny things like whenever I'm with you I'm, I feel like because me and Stacy we've had a lot of sleepovers and I I like we like always do like late night talk. you braid each other's hair and stuff <laughs> not that I want to get in on that but... yeah oh. 
Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. I don't um, have anybody like that. Tony, we need to do that sometime. And I feel like I'm always, like, I try to have deep conversations. And she's like, let's just watch, like, Unbreakable, like, Kimmy Schmidt. Or, like, or like I lent her a book last summer, and it was, she was just, you would just hear her laughing. Mm-hmm. And she was like, sorry. That's she's cr- just, she just, like, does her job, and then she, that's she can close it off. And you, that it gives me insight, because I know you've been an important influence. You're at least two years older than Liv, so you've been able to... Watch her grow up, and she uh, she's got kind of a man brain, if I can say. She's she's good at compartmentalizing. You're kind of great talker. Yeah. You're, well, you're... I I feel like I got that all from what? Well, for I mean, and I I'm sure I'm I'm sure I'm violating a lot of uh, norms or or what have you when I say that. But no, I mean historically, men are known for having compartmental being better at or having the luxury to compartmentalize, and and women are supposed to you know take care of things and feel them and experience in them. And I think that's evolving. Liv is certainly a beautiful product of uh, well, an evolved woman. Stacy and I are different. Like, although I'm married, like, we don't need a man. But, like, we're very independent and we have fun. And if I'm, like, letting anything bog me down, she'll just call me and be like, enough is enough. Like, she's just... That's outstanding. I need yeah. Stacy. And then when my parents get tired of me, they just send me to her. Um... If I get in trouble, yeah. stay, I get a call from Stacy. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I I am the queen of compartmentalizing. Which, okay. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing as a woman because you're kind of like man brain, man power. I don't. I don't know. Is that a good or a bad thing for a woman to compartmentalize? It's helped me in my career, but I don't know if elsewhere it's a good thing. I think the people you work with, though, you kind of have to be that way because people on television can be hard to work with. And if you are just, like, n- nothing they could ever say would, like, make you upset or cry. Like, you're just like, whatever. Like, That's true. Yeah, like, she's I'm sure very, there's... like, she, like, she will not deal with BS. Like, if a huge celebrity came up and, like, dissed her, she'd be like, whatever. I don't, I don't have time for you. Like, doesn't phase her. There are a lot of egos. Well, one thing, too, like, behind the scenes in TV, and you kind of were telling me a funny story, Mike, about, and, you know, you having some incidents or whatever with, um, like, a field okay. produced, like a field production type thing. Right. But especially, like, live television, when you're in the control room where everything is happening behind the scenes to put the show on actually, like, the on the air. I mean, that room is, you just experience so much stuff in that room. People are cussing and yelling at each other going crazy in there and running around and it is chaos right so if you take every single thing that's happening seriously into heart you would not make it through one night of a television show not one that's interesting because um i mean obviously we could do a whole show about inappropriate behaviors particularly of the the men in, in in your field and and that type of stuff and that's just despicable, shouldn't happen. There's lots of yelling and screaming and, I mean, hostile work environments with a lowercase h <laughs> just that aren't gender specific. I mean, how you talk to a lot of young people that want to be doing what you're doing. How do you teach them to, you know, not get abused, but to also have thick skin to deal with just, you know, day in the life? I mean, that's a great question because I think there is a balance to it. I also do think with the way you started that question, Mike, I think the atmosphere has changed so much, especially in the last like five-ish years where certain behavior that might've been tolerated in like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you absolutely can't manage yourself like that right now. Right. So I think they're not even walking in and facing some of the things like, co-workers and I faced when we started in the business when it was just chaos <laughs> inappropriate chaos a lot of times right so but I do think you have to come in very self-aware and you have to come in with a level of letting a lot of things roll off your back learning how to pick your battles which I was terrible at I did not know how to pick my battle you know, so I was just like up in everything, <laughs> comment for everything, and I'm fighting with people over all these kind of things. <laughs> when ultimately you're like, it doesn't even matter. 
you know i started watching some guy i think he might be canadian but some guy on youtube has this channel where he goes around talking to people in different age groups and asking them for like what kind of advice would you give people like 70 year olds 80 year olds a 60 year olds and i really listened to them because things that I was freaking out about 10 or 20 years ago, I wish I had somebody my age now to tell myself, like, girl, chill out, <laughs> chill out. This isn't going to matter. This mistake isn't going to, this fight isn't going to matter. Like, let it go. So that's one of the things is you kind of have to remember what you're doing in this moment is not life or death. You know, yeah. <laughs> you'll pass through it. That's great. Pick and choose your battles. That's, that's a good one. I could, I could have benefited from that. I wish I would have talked to you sooner. <laughs> two two wives ago would have been great. I'll give her. I'll get. I'll get, I'll give you her number. Thank you. I think. She's a she's a, a unlicensed therapist on the side. Yeah, that's good. better than a few I've paid. Yeah. So for your final question, uh, what do you think of the gag order that was given in the Idaho murder case? Just unconstitutional, constitutional. Because I can see both sides, but like you've been through it. So what do you think? I would use another word, common. That's what they always do, especially when the cases are very high profile. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be talking. And that unfortunately sometimes is not going to be beneficial to what we do because you want to talk to people as you're covering the cases and as you're uh, following the timeline of of the case. So at that point, you're just um, relying on whatever documents they might put out or things people said early on before the gag order. So I think on the TV side, obviously, it's like a big bummer, (laughs) clearly, but it's also understandable because at the end of the day, they are trying to protect the integrity of what that case is and trying to get to that specific case you brought up at least, trying to get justice for those victims. So they're not trying to misstep in that situation. So I would just say it's common. Mm. So I have one follow-up question. Has your job become harder now that everyone is like a TikTok investigator and like you have all these different, like getting sources, I feel like they're everywhere now. Like I know everything about the different murder cases now from like Reddit or like Instagram or TikTok. It's like, do you find yourself now like following like TikTokers or like Mm. to get information? That's a great question. And people, a few people have asked me that. Um, Cause now my, my point of view is everybody has a voice. You know, we have technology now where everybody can have a voice. Everybody could have an opinion, but you still could fall into the same traps that would apply to us in doing our fact checking and our who, what, when, where, why situation. So a TikToker can just randomly go out there and say whatever they wanna say, and they're not gonna get sued for that, right? Because they're just like an individual person who's just talking. But a brand, a global international brand following a case and then say, hey, this TikToker said X, there's no veracity to that. So in terms of sourcing though, right? I think, I think it's rare that someone in that space is going to have some kind of sourcing that, you know, a news outlet Mm -hmm. or a newspaper or something is going to have because we built so many relationships with people and especially in the community federally. So sometimes when you hear us say, oh, it's a sort, it's someone pretty high up who, mm-hmm. who know, who's dialed into that situation and they're giving us little tidbits on the side, right? But a TikToker or a YouTuber or whoever is probably not going to get that. And a lot of stuff I see them doing with that, they're actually taking someone else's information who themselves is a TikToker you know, or someone from YouTube and they're like, oh, I saw this on somebody else's TikTok or whatever. So I don't think it's, it's any harder at all. Okay. It seems like it would make it, I mean, it's not a level playing field. Obviously you, you get to put on a more professional production. That's your advantage, but they don't have to follow any ethics or standards. So they can be pretty sensational. Whereas you have to be responsible. And 
I happen to like responsible news. I'll, I'll confess I watch PBS NewsHour. I, which is nothing more boring than that, but they tell actual news stories. But some people, like Liv, they want to watch the crazier the better. So uh, that's, that's hard to compete with. you got to sort of stay in your lane, I suppose. Yeah, no, that's true, you know. But like, for example, with sports, right? We'll take it off of murder for a second. You know, you have your standard your ESPNs and your Fox Sports and your NBC Sports and all of that, right? And even you have some websites, like whatever they have, the Barstool Sports or whatever. But there are a lot of individual people out there who are doing their own, oh, I'm doing my own sports channel. And right. they have some really good things to say, and I will watch them because they're very opinionated, they're funny and all that kind of stuff. But that's a different level of liability yeah. having fun talking about a celebrity or like a pop culture site talking about the bachelor or something yeah. versus like you're talking about politics right you're talking about a crime you're talking yeah. about policy or something like that that's a different can of worms so i think it depends on the the genre and the mm -hmm. topics that you're you're talking about yeah yeah well thank you so much for coming on our show we would it's really nice to meet you, and uh, you've done a pretty good job on this one over here, so keep, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, and congratulations as well to you guys for um, this venture and to your producer on the side, Tony, as well, Tony, for, yeah. for launching this and wishing you guys all the best, and I will be watching. Okay. Thanks, Stacey. Appreciate Bye. you. Bye. My first rodeo. My first rodeo. My first well, she was great, Liv. Thanks for bringing her out. Yeah, Stacey's awesome. So, backstory: she's known me since before I was born. How is that? How does My someone, mom. Does she was. She's your mother. No, <laughs> basically, no, sort of. She's a sister slash mom slash everything. My mom used to coach her in gymnastics. Coach. She was a gymnast then. Yeah, Stacey, Stacey, Stacey was a gymnast. Okay, how big is Stacey? She looked. Not short, aren't you? She's, usually short. She's shorter. She's probably like two, three. I'm five four, and she's probably like five two. Oh, okay, I would have guessed. Yeah, she's taller. A, she's short. So my mom got her, like, helped her get into like her college scholarship, and she went to Auburn, where my mom went. Huh. And I've just known her forever. So I've done summers with her. She vacations with us. She's like my best friend, sister, uh, mentor. When my mom doesn't want to deal with me, she just calls Stacy. I wish I would have known that. I would have uh, asked her seriously about the uh, the, the the gym. Missed abuse cases, I'm sure. Given oh my gosh! What she yes. does, she's at least aware of them. If she hasn't been part of some of the productions, yeah. I mean, she she's an early gymnast back in the days, and she was on full ride at Auburn. And oh, she wow. was she's an amazing gymnast. That's pretty. No neat. fear. Like yeah. my mom will tell you, no fear. She's she's amazing. Huh. I wonder if she did she ever cover sports or or handle sports from a production I standpoint. I think that that time of her life, like she just wanted to kind of right. That was her life forever. She just kind of wanted to. Leave her tights out. behind. Yeah, like she did it, she conquered it, and now right. she just she was gonna. Does she ever just get up on a balance beam and chalk up her hands no. and just and like, do we it go for to the old time's sake? No, we go to the beach with her in the summer, and like she won't do cartwheels. Uh, she's like done with it. It's like like she said, once she's right. done with it, it's in the past, and she just turns it off like a fountain. It'd be fun to do that. It. Like when she quits her job one day, just do a back handspring out of the office or something. I mean, she's had like, you know, all gymnasts have pains and stuff yeah. from all their injuries so i'm sure she feels pain but yeah she's awesome she knows all the criminals she knows all their families she's a female woman producer yeah. she's awesome she's killing it in the world she's great she's an amazing role model you're lucky to have her uh, and yeah, she's, uh she's, she's, just, awesome. I mean, she's very thoughtful i hope uh hope our listeners can perceive in the video yeah uh, definitely watch it because she's just really thoughtful she thinks about what she says and, you and can uh, google her i on, could learn from that yeah you can google her on youtube and watch her on a bunch of other videos oh really in front of the camera yeah yeah because most of what she does is behind the camera obviously. yeah she gets interviewed all the time and she's on podcasts she underplays it she's always yeah. on tv that's a, we may yeah. have to have her back for a part too for real for real I, we didn't even ask about the video game appearance i know she was a grand theft auto lady that's outstanding but yeah stacy newman everyone so she was outstanding. we loved having her yeah see you soon see you soon